Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and today we're going to be taking a look at Frontier's new fiber optic internet service that they're rolling out here in my home state of Connecticut, but also to places all over the country. This is a very aggressive rollout, both in the actual running of the fiber on poles, but also in the marketing. You will likely be getting a lot of calls from Frontier if they get those wires running past your home. My father was one of those customers and he decided to take them up on the offer to see how well this fiber optic internet worked. I just got back from his place where I ran a whole bunch of tests. So we'll see if this stacks up with what the marketing uh, is saying about this new internet service. He opted for the entry level one, which is 500 megabits symmetrical. So you can get 500 megabits downstream to the home and then 500 megabits upstream. We'll test that out in a second and also look at a few other things as well. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is not a paid sponsorship. My father paid for the service with his own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and no one has reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this new internet service is all about. Now, their service offering right now goes up to two gigabits according to their website. I found their availability locator here to be totally broken. So if you are interested, I would suggest having to pick up the phone the old fashioned way to give them a call to see if it's available where you are. But again, they're probably gonna call you first. Now, the 500 megabit plan that my dad went with here in Connecticut is $54.99 a month. That's at least what they charged him over the phone. He had to agree to a one-year minimum contract for that price. So who knows what this will cost a year from now, but that's what they're charging right now for the entry level. And I think that's going to be more than adequate for most families. Now, they also have a one gigabit symmetrical plan for $74.99 a month, and then you can go up to two gigs for $149 a month. All of the plans are symmetrical, and all of them require some year-long commitment at least in order to get those prices locked in. Installation was super fast. In fact, they offered to come out the same day they called him to get him up and running. When the technicians came out, it was maybe 90 minutes or so to get everything going. So they have one guy who goes up on the pole, the other guy brings the cable into the house, and then you are done. Now they installed what's called an ONT, which is an optical network terminal. The one that my dad got was a Nokia XS01X-Q. Frontier is using something called XGSPON here in Connecticut, and this can run up to 10 gigabits per second to the home if they ever enable the service to go that fast. And these Nokia devices actually have a 10 gig ethernet jack built in, but it can also step down to five, 2.5, and in his case, to one gigabit uh, for the local network connection. So if he does decide to upgrade to two gigabits, it's mostly just a call to the central office to get that speed upgraded without having a technician come back out. Now they do supply a router as part of the deal. My father got this Aris one. This is rated for up to a gigabit. So I would imagine if you're on the two gig service, you might get something a little more robust. Because he opted for the phone service, he has to use this router. And I'm gonna be a little technical here, but what the technician did is basically double natted this router with his existing router that was running throughout his home. So that looks to be what the default position will be from the technicians. There are ways to have this router work via a DMZ, so it just passes all of the traffic to your router, so there's no extra hop there. But if you are looking to get phone service, you're going to have to have this thing sitting in between your router and the ONT. If you opt to not use the phone service, the ONT should plug into your own router without anything in between. Now, according to Frontier's support page here, they do not provide technical support for routers that you install yourself. The only one they're going to support is the one they provide to you. So just be aware of that. All right, so now that we've talked about the installation process, let's take a look and see how this service performs. All right, let's take a look at a speedtest.net test here. And this is running to Frontier's own speed test server in Wallingford, Connecticut. And this is a good way to gauge whether or not the connection can perform at the marketed speeds, at least within Frontier's own network. And when we test Comcast services, uh, we also connect to Comcast servers for the same reason. And here you can see we are getting the marketed speeds. And look at that ping, only two milliseconds, but it's only going to another server in Connecticut, which is not that far away. Now here's a more practical example, uploading a video to YouTube. I'm using a utility on the Mac called Little Snitch that reports how much bandwidth the browser is using doing this task. 
And as you can see here, we're definitely short of the 500 megabit per second advertised speed on the upstream. Certainly 300 plus megabits per second on a residential internet plan is great, but we're paying for more than that. And the reason why we're not getting that full speed is that when you are transmitting data across the internet, the server you're connecting to has to be able to support all the bandwidth that you can deliver to it. And in this case, YouTube is not able to do so. That might be because of how Frontier and Google have negotiated transiting data between their networks, or it could just be the maximum that YouTube supports because they have a limited amount of bandwidth for all the videos that people are sending up. Incidentally, here at my house, I have the top tier residential internet connection from Comcast. It is also a fiber optic plan called Gigabit Pro. I did a whole series on that that you can see linked down below in the video description. And I get the exact same speeds uploading this file to YouTube. So even though I'm paying for a very fast connection, this is the best I'm getting for this particular operation. And this is no isolated example. In most cases, I rarely find websites or services that can deliver all of the speed that I'm able to handle here. And the same is going to be true of these lower cost fiber optic connections. Now, as far as ping rates are concerned, I did send a ping out to Google to see how quickly things went back and forth. And I was getting about 25 to 26 milliseconds. And this is fairly close to what I get with Comcast's regular old cable internet connection here in the area. So I don't think this will perform any better from a ping rate perspective versus a traditional coax connection, but the connection is going to be a lot more reliable. Where my dad lives, he's got a lot of uh, salt air around because he's near the beach, and every couple of years, the uh, connections on his cable get corroded and the signal gets degraded, and although he does get his internet, it's not as reliable. So I do think, although the ping rates are about the same, fiber optic is a superior technology to coax, and I think you'll have a much greater reliability of service because of it. Now, I also tried out Netflix. This is their film uh, Meridian, which is a Creative Commons production, so I can actually show it on screen here. And as I jump around to different parts of the film, it very quickly responds, much the same way it does on a traditional cable service. Now, we also checked out YouTube running a 4K video at 60 frames per second. Like the Netflix video, I was jumping around to see how fast YouTube responds to that because YouTube doesn't download the whole video to you. They give you chunks based on where you put the playhead. And as you can see here, things are spinning up pretty quickly. There is a little bit of a lag with this, and I think it's due to the fact that we're playing a 4K60 video. I did test this very same video here at my house with my fiber optic Comcast 6 gigabit connection, and it was performing about the same. So right now, this appears to be working quite well for my dad, but there's a few things to think about here. The first is that he's definitely the first person in his neighborhood to get this service. And as more people come on in the neighborhood, they're all going to be sharing that connection. So the real test will be in a couple of months as Frontier continues their aggressive marketing of this new internet option and how many people sign up for it because Frontier on the infrastructure side has to keep up. They have to provide enough bandwidth to the neighborhood and the central offices that those neighborhoods are connecting to also need the bandwidth to get that data out to the greater internet. So that's gonna be the big test, the long range uh, performance here. But right now it's definitely performing as advertised and I will probably come back to this in three or four months and see how well it's working for him after more people in the area start signing up for this service. Incidentally, all of the testing we just did today was connected directly via ethernet, wired right into that router they provided. So if you are running on Wi-Fi, you'll definitely see different results. Wi-Fi can be very finicky depending on how your home is constructed and where the access points are placed and how many access points you have. And in many cases, your lousy internet might be your lousy Wi-Fi and not actually the service coming into your home. That said, I am very uh, much a fan of fiber optic service offerings because they provide you bandwidth in both directions at the same speed. So the entry level frontier plan here with 500 megabits per second upstream is light years faster than anything any of the cable providers are currently offering. But they are up in their game now because they see that there is some significant competition ahead for them. 
So I think what we're going to see here is lower prices and better performance, hopefully, now that consumers are getting more choices. And I'm really excited to have more choices in my neck of the woods. So we'll come back to this in a few months and see how things are going after the neighborhood gets a little more subscribed. And I'd love to hear from all of you because I'm willing to go back over there and test some other stuff if you have a specific use case. So let me know down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Brian Parker, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Baby Metal Fox God, Tom Albrecht, Amda Brown, Matt Zagaya, and Tech Time with Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.